Are you thinking of using test.wait to write asynchronous code? Well, stop. There's a better way. Let's start with how an operating system works, specifically processes and threads. We build applications that compile into commands that run on processes. Those processes are made of threads, and processes have a limited number of threads that they can use to run our commands. Code that reserves a thread and then holds it until it's completely finished is called blocking code. Typically, we see this with CPU or I.O. intensive commands. CPU intensive commands include things like image or video compression or even complex mathematical computation. For I.O. intensive commands, you're looking at things like database reads and writes or web requests or even reading and writing from the file system. Blocking code is a bad thing, and we should write code that releases threads as quickly as possible. So let's look at an asynchronous method using task.wait. In this code, we're going to write the ID of the thread we're on to the console. And then we're going to create a new task that waits five seconds before returning. Then we're going to call the wait method on that task, and once it finishes running, we'll write the ID of the thread we're on to the console again. When we run this code, you can see that the thread we're on before we waited and after are the same. Is that a coincidence? Nope, because task.wait does not release the thread while it's waiting. We've already talked about not wanting to do that. So what's a better way to write asynchronous code? Introducing the await operator. Let's refactor that code a little bit. We'll remove the task.wait and replace it with await task. Voila, our code ran, and we can see that it actually finished on a different thread than it started with. Why did that happen? Because when that process began to wait for our task to complete, it freed up that thread to be used by others who may need it. And then once our operation was finished, it gave us a free thread that we could use to finish up. Now, the thread that it gave us could have been the same one we had before, but we certainly can't count on that. And it's best for us to stand back and let the thread pool do that voodoo that it do. So there you have it. Unless you're getting way down in the weeds on threading, let's leave the task.wait alone and stick with the await operator. Until next time.